tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Johnson. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Welcome to After Buzz. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, episode six of season five, Boardwalk Empire, The Devil You Know. My favorite episode up until this point. In, in terms of just, wow, an amazing episode. Uh, very sad, the sad things we'll get to. But I'm Charlie Behrens, and who I'm is Be across yeah, from Yeah, I'm me? Bethany Jaber. Kevin Undergaro. All right, guys, well, Let's uh, let's get right into it. Um, any initial reactions? Same <laughs> as you. Just, I mean, I've, I again, I haven't seen a bad episode of the show, and yeah. uh, and tonight was amazing, and very sad. Uh, Bethany was. You sensed a lot of this was coming. I'm, so. I'm, I'm terrible. You don't ever want to watch anything with me, really, because I just I, I huff and puff the whole time and I get out of my seat. So thank you for yeah, being you, really patient, guys. <laughs> you do have very interesting techniques for watching <laughs> tense it's, scenes. I, I looked it up, and this episode is written by Howard Corder, and he also wrote Lake View Terrace, which oh. is like a super suspenseful film. So I, I feel like the there was a lot of like he just held everything out for us the whole entire time. Um, yeah, I'm, I I don't I mean, where do we begin? It's yeah, well, why don't why don't we begin in 1897? Okay, and uh, we'll kind of have a slow go from there. So the big th the big thing we saw in 1897 was the introduction of Jillian, and um, that was sort of the reveal at the end. And then before that, um, at the beginning of the episode, we have Nucky and his wife. Yep. What would you guys take off Nucky and his wife and their interaction? Well, again, I always go to the symbolism, and he says, why are you making the pie? And she said, um, uh, because they're starting to turn. And I feel like, you know, he's starting to turn. Mm -hmm. You know, he's getting envelopes. Mm -hmm. He's going into the corruption. You know, he's... Interesting. And, and I don't feel that she's that kind of woman. And yeah. we know she's going to be left behind. How? Is it going to be crime, or is it... Right now, we know she's nauseous because, but is, is it because she's pregnant or is it because she's ill? She, yeah, she's pregnant. pregnant. Yeah, she's pregnant. But so mm. we think, you know. But maybe she's ill, or some tra something's going to happen where we're going to lose her, and that puts him on the course that we right. see him on in the present. But I, I, um, I think that's interesting. You know, I think him collecting the envelopes and already going already down that road. Yeah, and man, it's he's. Such a, he's even then he's so ambiguous. So he's collecting the envelopes. Yet when he catches Jillian, he's still very fair. He's like, okay, come on, it's over. You're caught. Nothing's gonna happen to you. And you you believe him. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to see that because we know what he does. He, he's eventually. gonna and we're God and we're seeing so much more of the commoner being creepy. We see a shot of him taking a a, a young girl, girl and, yeah. and the mother's outside waiting. Um, yeah, the the Mabel thing. I thought she was making a strawberry pie at the beginning, and there again, I, she was. You yeah, have the red um, sort of symbolism. Mm -hmm. you know, is, it, well. is it death or, or what? What is yeah. it for her? We'll find out. Um, Bethany, thoughts? On yeah, I mean, it could be. It could be. Yeah, the red, her red hair. It could also be because we're in the month of June and it's strawberry season. Yeah, I mean, it could be anything. <laughs> it could You're be. Right. I mean, there. No, it's there. I mean, I think there's a, there's so many options with it, but you have to wonder what kind of mother does that. Like how, what, where are you in your level of desperation that you bring your daughter to the Commodore like that? I can't even get there because I don't think it's about the mother. It's about the Commodore, right? You know, what he's doing, and then also, the, you know, we hear the weather forecast is a hurricane. It's going to wipe everything away, and the guy says, "What does it matter to you, Nucky? Like we're here, like working and, right. and conducting mm -hmm. our business, and you're just collecting off people." Which you see in his life, he's going to just be a politician who's kind of, yeah, just going to, he's going to kind of be. A, uh, a leech or a pariah with other people, and other people are going to be doing the grinding, right. so to speak. But also, we know the hurricane's coming. 
So again, it's just more symbolism of yeah. change and, and not necessarily change for the good. Yep, yep. And what I like about season five, what it's done with this 1897 storyline is it's always butted it up against the a scene with Nucky in you know present time mm -hmm. and here the juxtaposition is he's drunk at a bar and a lot of the things he's saying in that drunken state of mind um correlate to what's going on in 1897 which i f for the first time i felt like i got it maybe you guys got it before me but i i, I really this episode i felt like it was coming from Nucky's head like we're seeing these episodes because this is what when he's out or when he's tired or when he's lost in thought this is what he's visualizing and i didn't uh -huh. necessarily feel that way up until this episode mm -hmm. it just felt like kind of like flashbacks and cut twos right i don't right. know do you guys feel that way yeah i mean i i i think it's really painted that way in this episode mm -hmm. specifically because what they say, you know, a drunk man's uh, words are a sober man's thoughts, and here you see Nucky drunk the entire time, spitting out exactly yeah. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and so he said some things like, um, it, you know, where he was getting really belligerent saying, you, what, what are you doing it for? What's it all for? You know? Um, it's the it's, uh Anytime something bad, that's why I think it's great writing. Anytime something, you ever notice anytime something really bad happens in your lives, you know, if you guys have ever bottomed out or come close to bottoming out, you always, you know, kind of reflect back and say, oh my God, you know, if only I had done this or if mm -hmm. I'd done that differently in my life. And we see it's bottoming out for him. Things are coming apart. He's, he, you know, we know with Joe Kennedy is kind of introducing him to a new way of doing business. Um, it's, it's all of like, what is this all for? Why are we doing this? I think it's very interesting that he went back to his roots. He went back to a poor bar. Right, right. The, you know, he, w he went back. And, and there's an old saying, you can never go home, and it's true. So he goes back there, and even though he beats up the guy, like I thought that guy was going to beat him up. I did too. But he gets over that hurdle, but then we see the women kind of give him that comeuppance, and it's just mm -hmm. he's not he doesn't belong there either. Mm -hmm. So he was like, so my knee jerk is, you know, this gangster life I've been living doesn't work. You know what? I'm going to go back to my roots. Like, that's a bar my dad would have been at. Right. right? That's the world that you, in a, in a without Nucky in his life, that's where Eli, Eli would have been. Mm -hmm. He would have been the sheriff to go in a bar like that, have a, maybe a beer or two, and just have a, you know, a, um, a much more middle class, lower middle Very class true. lifestyle. Yeah. And so he goes back to that saying, okay, I'm done with the high fluent world. We're the same. I, he says, um, I know them, but I'm not like them. So he's mm -hmm. trying to say to these people, I'm like you guys. You know, I'm not like all these rich people. It, going back to the 1800s, late 1800s, I, I wasn't those people. I was poor like you, the Commodore. Mm -hmm. He's the one that molests children. He's the one, like, I'm not in that world. Mm -hmm. I'm one of you. And of course, the way it ends up, you know, we find out that He's not one of them either. He's really a man without a country. Yeah. And it was interesting that it ended, or at least this episode ended on the note of, no, we're going to fight. You know, when 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 uh, Doyle, you know, posses up and says to him, "What are we going to do? We get, yeah, we're going to fight." So it's yeah. now he's back to, okay, I am going to just go gangster. Right. I don't think by episode eight that's where he ends, but now I think the pendulum has swung back to, okay. Yeah. So this way, the, going out and being general population, going out and being a civilian, going out and being, going back to my roots, poor Irish boy, working boy, son of a sailor. No, I can't can't do that. Obviously, that was just, you know, uh, me feeling sorry for myself, being stupid. Yeah. Now I'm going to go back and fight. But I st I, my prediction is that's not going to work either. Right. Right. Well, yeah. And we can get to that in a second. Sure. But I, I, I share, share that with you. Um, so... Going back to um, 1897, just a little bit, we see this, uh, and this also has to do with the bar, when he finds that little rascal, which ends up being Jillian. Yeah. Um, and then what he's saying to her is he's like, no one's going to hurt you. You're caught. You know, we're, we're going to, we are the law. We're going to take care of this. In his head, who knows what he's actually thinking then? Because this whole episode, he's been seeing 
young girls go to the Commodore. He's looking for a way to get a leg up with the Commodore. And then this oh, one problem that he's solving. No. So is that is that the thought in his head? Well, now that you planted that seed in my but head. I, 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 I was probably, there. I was there. Yeah. So what do you think? I um I don't think he's gotten there yet. I think we're going to see him get there in in the next episode. Okay. Dude, I, I didn't see him processing that, but I felt, but we like, don't know, but I felt but like what no, they did Charlie, is they let the audience put that together. I don't know episode. one way or another. I was with you, Bethany. Yeah. I was thinking that it's the Catholic, Irish Catholic, Nucky, who's like, we're not going to hurt you, and he really means it, and he's being well-intentioned. Mm-hmm. But... Charlie makes a great point that he observed, it, it seemed like he had some disdain for the Commodore when he was observing his misdoings with the young people, but Charlie, you might be right that he's seeing that as, ooh, this yeah. is my end. He doesn't, Commodore doesn't mention my name. He won't mention me by name. We see he's so disrespectful to him, even though this guy's already given so much of his life Years, yeah. to him. Oh my God, that's terrible. No, I, I'm with both. That's I, terrible, Charlie. If you're right, that's no, awful. He's, he, he, it? he is right because because oh. I think they let the audience figure that out, and Nucky is going to figure that no, out. No, no, no. Charlie's saying he's already figured it out. Oh, and, but this is okay, why, because so back is... to the butting Ooh. up the drunk Nucky thoughts when the Joe Harper walks up to him when he's he's yeah. like, "Why would you trust me?" That's what he was saying in a drunken stoop. That's what he said right before Joe yes. Harper. Oh. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think it's very clearly set up that that. And again, I said this last week, and I think you guys said it as well, that like what is Jillian's point of being in this in this season, mm-hmm. you know, and I think a strong part of it is going to be story wise that we're going to see this thing in her childhood that set her on the path that got her to the mental institution that she's in now. And that starts with Nucky delivering her to the Commodore. Yeah. And so. that's the event that changes Nucky into into who he is, really. Like we're we're tracking back to that event, right? Right? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think I, I'm so. With yeah, you. I'm with you on the the that's what. But I I'm just I'm like a step behind you. I think I think younger Nucky hasn't clocked that yet. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah. I don't know. I'm well, really ma- curious maybe now. maybe that's why we get. By the way, Bre- we only have two more episodes after this episode. <laughs> I know. And the heads go down. And they shake. Yeah. Um, what should we... Do you guys want to hang on to 1897? Any final points? Or should we move on to well, Chicago? Well, I think you just, sh- you just shocked me. Okay. Which is why, by right. the way, why I love After Buzz. Yeah. Because we, we kind of... Listen... We don't know any better than you guys, the fans. Honestly, right. we're we just, just like you. This. We watch this show. We happen to have the three of us are together, so we we're comparing each other's notes. You know, like any book circle would be. We're a right. TV circle, but that's just a great example because I, Bethany and I were seeing something totally different. Yeah. And you now that you see that. It really blows my mind. And that, again, that's why I love After Buzz. Yeah. Probably a good segue here is to remind people to please go to iTunes and rate and comment on us. Please continue to rate and comment on our YouTube page. We love reading your comments. And um, your comments also help us. They really help us make mm-hmm. better shows. And um, I can't even believe two more. But I'm not going to limit because people get mad because they bum off. But you guys, honestly, you know, I think we're, we're watching a masterpiece here. We're watching yeah. a masterpiece in direction. We're watching a masterpiece in writing. We're watching a masterpiece um, in acting, in production design. I mean, you're seeing it fire on all cylinders. Yeah. So I understand why. Anyway, I'm a little upset. So I don't, know, I don't have anything else to say about 1897 other than... Um, oh, final note. La- last week we were talking about Nucky and the teeth and that kind of bothering us initially. It didn't bother me at all this week, I think, just seeing yeah, him a few times. Him. And he's, yeah. he's nope. an all amazing in. actor. So all I just wanted in. to throw that out there. All right, Chicago. <laughs> oh, my oh, boy. <laughs> um, okay, so, you know, just to set it up, we have this, this transaction that's you know, we saw last week they send uh, Ben Alden and Eli in with a suitcase full of paper clip things. And we, uh, come on, you've got to be a little better than just the clipping. But they're just disposable help. They are just disposable. That's how they're viewing them. The feds mm-hmm. are just like, you guys are dead anyway. So, mm-hmm. you know what? Who gives a crap? This is your only chance. You know, and if you don't do it, he's going to kill you. We're going to, or we're going to throw you away for the rest of your life and terrorize your family. Yeah, I mean, they had no choice, and they, and you could see that it was, um, it was lame the way the feds did it. Stupid, actually, right. I think. 
I, I agree. I mean, just not waiting for the right moment because it almost went terribly wrong and ended up going right. But we saw just how disposable Van Alden was. Yeah. Does but, it ever go right with the feds? Ever? I mean, I, I feel like I'm sure every. It does. I'm sure it does. I mean, I. In in, in 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 Boardwalk Empire Land, I feel like it never oh, does. It, they're they're just no. they're just never fully together. They don't have all the information. They no. always act too soon. Well, it's even just the fact the, that you know you know historically that the fact that they had to, the way they had to take down Capone. Right. The guy was just killing people yeah, left and right. I mean, he was breaking every law, and they finally had to tax evasion. Get him on taxes. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah they're. I've always heard that they're a little bit Keystone Cops, meaning they're right. they're kind of bumbling idiots, right. you know. Um, Certainly, how they're they're portrayed yeah. in this show. But Bethany, you made uh, quite a few noises when Van Alden <laughs> met his demise. I, how, what was your reaction to that? I'm I. I just, I was really hoping for something similar to the way, and we went with Chalky today, which was because mm-hmm. Chalky was terrible too. Yeah, it no, was awful. I know, but when the filmmakers are so blunt about it, like I know he's not coming back. Like I know there's no like, oh whoops, this happened to you. Like like there's no yeah. like if we, if we go to Amazon, if we go to Netflix, if we go to something, like Chalky could possibly come back, but Van Alden, no way, no way, Jose, he is gone. That was that was that was <laughs> like a, a very clear death and that th- I think that's what really bummed me out because we're really even if it were to go on we wouldn't get him again yeah I think I think he went out in a very yeah I think he got what he knew he was dead at that point I I believe and he was going for his full out last hurrah that last great act of defiance yeah <laughs> and know, it, it was it, it was great it was hard, hard to see because this is a star of the show yeah. After I'd say after Buscemi, it's him. Yeah. And it was really hard for us to let say goodbye to him, and so rapidly. And again, this is like I said, this is just the tragedy of this eight episodes to do this. And I don't care if if he the I don't care who made the call for eight episodes. It's really hard. Yeah. It's really hard because, to me, the death is, it was sad because it was so quick. I yeah. I wasn't ready, but I love that he he did go out. Saying I, he said his name. This is who I am, and you know, in the name of the the treasury yeah. and this and God. God, he brought Jesus the religion Christ. back into You're it. You're gonna go down, and you know what? It's and and through his death and that action, is how the ledger ends up in the he- hands Very of true. So he ultimately. Ironically, down. yes, he did, and and I I actually cheered when he, he you know, I like Capone in this, mm-hmm. but I was cheering for Van Alden. I was like, yeah, you know, I yeah. loved it. It was like, you know what? Screw you. This is who I am. I've lived this lie for so long, mm-hmm. and we know he's lived many lies. The, the a lot of demons in him, but the fact that. It's like even Breaking Bad. I always go back to that show. I love the way Walt went out. He did so many mm-hmm. wrong things, but in the end, he went and freed Jesse. He did the right thing, and so for this guy to you know attack Capone the way he did, gives his life for the cause, and that gesture is when Ralphie hands over the books to right. D'Angelo. Right. Which yeah. Is the, this all because of I think Van Alden. Yeah, it was Van Alden died in his meth lab, you know, yes. so to speak. He, I mean, it, to use your Breaking Bad analogy, he he was in a mix of crime, a mix of uh, the law, and he brought. Got into it, which we hadn't but really that's seen to him, him do. But that's, that's all him. Yeah, everything it's came back who he really was yeah. that he kind of repressed. Yeah, and you know he got lost, like a lot. Of, by the way, Nucky got lost on his path, right? Right. We're seeing it in 1897, going back to the 1800s. We're seeing how he, he got lost on his path. Well, we know Van Alten got lost on his path. Yeah. You know he was going to be this God-fearing lawman. And somewhere he got, we saw we saw how he got lost yeah. on the path. So at the end, for him to step up and do this, I thought was phenomenal. I just we should also just make mention Paul Mooney and George Raft are real actors. And again, I always mm-hmm. say if you go to Turner Classic Movie Month, Turner Classic Movies, but especially in February, you see all the great films, and there's tons of you'll see Paul Mooney's a great actor. So I always I love that. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And, and 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 I knew there was a there's a, an actress and. I know some of our fans think this is just name dropping and they get angry, but whatever. I think it's kind of cool. Rosemarie from the Dick Van Dyke Show yeah. oh. was telling me that when she was a little girl, her, she was known as Baby Rosemarie. She was a big radio star and very big in vaudeville. Mm-hmm. And she she got to meet Al Capone. Wow. Because as Al said, and this is according to Rosemarie, yeah. the wife wants to meet the kid. 
<laughs> and so they brought her up, and she said, you know, it, the table was about 30 or 40 feet long, and he was at the head of it, and everyone was there, and he came in, and they gave her a little a little ring, a gold and diamond ring, which she still has. Really? And um, I don't know, I just think that's, no, that's so crazy. Cool. But he loved Hollywood, and, and if you notice, that trend never really stopped with the mob. They yeah. always have this weird no. fascination yeah. and respect. Hollywood, you, Sinatra, the Sinatra years, mm -hmm. it's so, so mm -hmm. I don't know, it's just very accurate and once again, very cool. Like he's yeah. the life of the party with them and he's all great. And then shut the door, shut the door, turn the music up. Yeah. <laughs> and um, mm. so it, it was nice to, sorry, see, no, go, to see somebody and, and, and I'm thrilled that it was Van Alden go after Capone because nobody has really touched him for, I, I don't know how many episodes now. Everybody's been so terrified. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I, I could have used a little more of that. Like if that, that, that scene could have been like a, a few minutes longer and I'm not one for violence, but it just, it, it was, it was a nice release. It, it was because you, you, especially for those who really like Van Alden, and I think we all here do, just to see him have his cathartic moment was cathartic for us. Uh, and by cathartic, I mean last moment because. Well, because we and we've had so many wonderful eruptions from him. Yeah. That it was it was it was almost too too short. Yeah. Because some of them have just been, I mean, they, when he, like, loses it in the office. I mean, um, what is that season? Is that season two or season one? I can't remember. Um, when he just goes nuts and just tears that whole office apart. Yeah, when they were picking on him, they were bullying him. Oh, maybe that was season That's four. right. Yeah, yeah. And with the iron, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that was great. Um, um, so yeah, be beautiful. I could have used a little bit more of that, but but uh, we should talk about Eli. Eli, and he was apologizing to his wife. Yeah, what was with that? Oh well, I mean, it was. He was like, "This was my best friend. This is the love of my life." What? It was bad enough they made all these other decisions, but then they had to like ruin our marriage by sleeping with you know Van Alden's wife. And he was just like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I brought all this on you. Maybe he knew those were his last moments. And mm -hmm. so, you know, in your last moments, you well, want to make amends, right? You want to make peace. Right. So it's always you're penitent right. and you, you're, you know, you're looking for exoneration. And he's saying, I'm, that's the one thing he regrets most is I'm so sorry. You know, you, you were the love of my life, my best friend, my partner. Yeah. And, you know, it was bad enough everything else I did, you know, not being there for you, and, you know, and then I had to go do that, and I'm so sorry. Right. And I'm going to die, but I'm so yeah. sorry. I want that out there, that, you know, I want to get that out before I get my head blown off. Yeah, no, I, and, now that, you go no, ahead. No, and let's me. be clear that, you know, Eli is not the womanizer in this series. Is I, That might be the first no, time that right. he, right. he right. has oh, any he discretion, in, in discretion. Yes. like, but, but for, for, just about the entirety of this series, he's been faithful mm -hmm. and loving to June. Mm -hmm. And we even see that in the 1897 when he starts talking about her. Um, yeah, we saw that. And, and so it's just so it, it is a really big deal for him. And yeah. once again, unfortunately, it's those bad decisions we talked about. You know, it started out with good intentions. Van Alden started out with his intentions, Nucky yeah. with his, Eli with his. But Eli's, a lot, so much of it was if not, if not all of those, poisoned by Nucky. So again, this is just more yeah. of the, the what's weighing on Nucky, more of the karma, more of the all of this that's uh, weighing yeah, on him I to mean, the point he, why you'd see why he's drinking and right. he's I'm, looking back and asking what's it for. I yeah. agree with that because in in the 1897 uh, this evening that w we were watching, he he would have just been like dreaming about June touching he his said when stick they on the boardwalk. Frog, when they were <laughs> he, but Nucky was like, "Hey, come!" Like basically, like you need to help me with this right now. Right. So otherwise, well, he would have just been like, "Ah." Oh, well, remember when they were time. when they were little kids the years before? <laughs> he just said, "I just want I don't. Why do we ever leave home?" Yeah, like he would have just stayed there and taken taking care of the dad and just had a, a middle class life. He would have been a, a working man and, and you know, and there's Nucky that got him into. Right, right, yeah, because world. even under the under the bridge they were saying, you know, your your dad wants to see his son too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So poor Eli's been in the middle this whole time. And um, and now happy that he survived, right? We're all happy Eli survived. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think when he walked out free, Bethany, you were like, oh, say, I just couldn't take another. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> um, interesting um, that he mentioned Ness. Ness. Elliot Ness. Yeah. As an Elliot Ness. Mm -hmm. And 
do you think he just found out about that in the papers? How did he know about uh, oh, so oh, the f that? What was was it the first scene of this season where I believe Eli was the one who started Okay, maybe it was the first scene of one of the episodes this season. Eli wakes up from a drunken stupor, looks out the the um, window at the top of the whatever he's in the yes. and then he sees Ness announce himself. And then we see the the okay. account, then we see the actual tax accountant in the back going up the stairs, right? Yeah, and and now that you say that, yes, I do re remember that, mm -hmm. but um yeah, that was the first uh raid um of their of gotcha. their spot. Okay, yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how we knew the, the Ness. The interesting thing. thing about Ness and um at least in my research years ago was that he wasn't as big an instrument in bringing down Capone as yeah. as myth made it out. It was when the Untouchables series came along. They needed somebody to kind of pin it to, so they brought you know they got him involved, and hmm. that's how the legend began. Yeah, he actually did more work years later. I think in like Vegas, or he did you know another. Oh really? And actually, ironically, he was an alcoholic. So it was an interesting Unbuffer. irony. You know, he became. An alcoholic, and um, anyway, so hmm. the way they're playing it now, it's there's uh, something pointing to him being the one to bring that going. Anyway, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. I'm just throwing it out there no, for you, it, history geeks. Yeah. Right. It, I've heard mixed things. I've heard that he wasn't that instrumental mm -hmm. in bringing that component. It became Hollywood More needed somebody it. to tie it to. They tied it to him with the Untouchables. But you know, I, you never know. Yeah. Right. No, that's um, good. But yeah, when when he said that too, I it I it just occurred to me that that's where he saw him. But I was thinking the same thing you were, Kevin. Um, okay, cool. What do you? It guys was also cool to see uh, last on Chicago. It was, it yeah. was cool to see Al, who's been this like ridiculous bully, just killing everybody, be so freaked out. Yeah, yeah. He was like, he end. almost yeah. killed me. He yeah, all, and he admitted that. What happened? Yeah. We could have been if we were barbers, right? He said, if we were barbers, we'd be. Home now, or it, something to that effect, right? Didn't he say yeah, something he, like? Uh, what was almost, that line? Do, do I you think know? it was again. It was. It was what we're seeing from this whole season is everyone's questioning. That's a good you know, point. If we had just, it could have been different for us. You know, maybe this wasn't yeah. the right path yeah. after all. Like we would have just been. Oh my God, this guy! I'm, I'm covered in blood. This guy almost killed me, and now the feds are coming, and we would have just. You and I would have been barbers. Just would have had normal lives. Oh, that's very true. It's like it's so it's where everyone is is questioning that. And by the way, except for Joe Kennedy, he seemed like the only one not. Yeah, well, he's about to hit his prime. He's you know? like strength in numbers. Yeah. You've got your family, and you know what? It's that's how you do things. So yeah. interesting. But everyone else seems like they're questioning. What? And go ahead. What's the name of the episode again? Uh, the Devil You Know. Oh well, then that's it, right? Right. The Devil You Know is the thing that wants more. Right, the 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 which is and it's also all, yeah. and it's also what is the most familiar. So you work with hey, you ever, if you hear this statement, well, why would you work with Frank? He's such a jerk. Well, he's the devil you know. Meaning, right. I know him, mm -hmm. so I know what to expect. Bobby might be better to work with, but guess what? He actually could be worse. Mm -hmm. So you know what? I'll work with Frank because he's <laughs> the right. devil I know. Devil you know versus so, the so devil you don't. So that's the yeah. that's always what that means, and we. Again, I think we see that throughout the episode, and, mm -hmm. and the next subject will be, uh, will be Harlem, Harlem. Is the devil you know? Yeah, two oh. carry-ons: the devil you know, and everyone's questioning it. We see Narcisse questioning what he's gotten himself into yeah. now that he has to negotiate. Yep, first time we've seen him weak. Yeah, he's he's always so high and mighty, angry to you know to the point, and when he sits down. When he, he and, and sighs and says Luciano and uh, like it's a new order and apparently I'm supposed to pay or others will come and, and extort for me more if I don't and j it was interesting to see him off his feet you know right. literally right. and 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 figuratively and yeah and then for his relationship with um, uh, daughter daughter Maitland daughter mm -hmm. Maitland. His relationship there and how he's reacting to her just coming there with Chalky's kid, you know. Bethany, what do you think of when you saw that scene? 
I yeah, I mean I was thrilled because it was I was just so happy for Chalky that it was his daughter. It kind of, you know, rounded it out for me because you know, if you're going to go, at least at least know you're leaving something good in the world. Mm-hmm. At least at least you haven't destroyed everybody's life. At least there's there's something that's okay. And so that 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 I guess gave us a little bit of permission to to feel all right with it, but mm-hmm. you know, it, it's just you, I don't know. You can never feel good about when when characters that you want to be together can't be together. That's mm-hmm. always so devastating. Why did Ch- Chalky take such a bad deal? I I think hearing I think hearing her voice and her sing and seeing her and his daughter had some sort of completion in his mind for it. But in that he wasn't going to risk but- killing him and, f- and risk his his daughter there oh having to see oh. and having to see it or potentially die again you know Copy. or kill another child that was my thought what, no, what no, do you th- i think that that makes sense so yep. in other words Absolutely. maybe the record won't he won't push the record but but she's at least free and she'll just have to whatever but at least they'll be away from yeah mm-hmm. i think he, he he saw he got that voice he's like i I don't even remember what your voice sounds like. And the, what he wanted to do is he wanted to play the record. He heard the record to think about the deal that Narcisse put in front of him. Chalky's a smart guy. He knew he was going to die, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was just playing it off like he would be fine for those two. He was very adamant that those two would leave on their own and those two would go. So I think he just didn't want to. It was so, sort of his uh, atonement with um, being someone allowing good to go out into the world because i think he still feels bad obviously that he's the reason his daughter died thoughts yeah i I think you're right yeah (laughs) i do i I think you're right and uh it just it was it was terrible because he was in a no-win situation i mean you're right i a shootout the daughter would have either died or um would have seen something that would have messed her up for the rest of her life Mm -hmm. and i think he knows he wouldn't be able to walk out with them He'd get mm-hmm. shot in the back. He wouldn't be able to do that. Right. Put them um, in danger. Yeah. So he at least got them out. I, uh, man, I hate Narcisse. <laughs> and by the way, for production design, you knew with Chalky's suit color, yeah. it was so different than theirs. They all had the dark suits. He was in a light brown one. Yeah. He was dressed for it. You knew it was coming. Um, all a dream to begin with. Ain't nobody ever been free. That Those were Chalky's last words to Narcisse. Any thoughts on those? All a dream to begin with, ain't nobody ever been free. Maybe the same thing we're talking about with Al Capone. We could be barbers right now. Yeah. Or do you think it has? I, yes, in some ways. And I think really just speaks of the African-American right. plight. It's like, you know, we're terms. never going to be free, buddy. Mm-hmm. You th- you know, keep going the way you're going, Narcisse. You're going to keep fighting this war, fighting this battle. But you're not going to win. You yeah. know, it's... They're not going to win. And in that in in that sense, I think it's a completion of or a semi completion of that the racial dynamic in Boardwalk Empire because Chalky sort of represented that. Um, and and yeah, all a dream to begin with. Ain't nobody ever been free. Maybe that's harkening back to the end of or or reminding us, you know, a part of what he represents in the show. So, but I think and I think the probably the bigger thing is. You're never going to be free of that life. You know, the, of that's the life. Thug life. Yeah. yeah, it's like, you're, you know, you're never going to be free. It's, yeah. You know, it's it's always dead or in jail. No one, very few people right. get out. Right. You know, which is, again, the Joe Kennedy way. And um, we can never get into predictions. Never broken Yeah, we can get into predictions later about, you know, where this is all going to end up. But, um, yeah. Well, um, what do we want to get... Um, any more thoughts on Harlem? Maybe specifically Chalky's last moments, and, uh, and then we probably have to get into predictions. I, just, I found it just a very upsetting and sad um, yeah. because he was just a great character, t- tragic. Tried to live the American dream, and um, you know he just fell short. It just it was very sad, and like I said, I just not see. So ugh. I know. At least I mean, I've, I, at least I have villains to cheer against right right you know i mean so yeah i, I have some catches from mike Arden oh before we perfect go to... let's yes do let's it. do All that right. um all right
right, all right, your swabbies. What do you got there? Oh, it's the AfterBuzz TV Catch of the Week. There we go. Love Thank that. you. Okay, Nucky referenced Longfellow's Song of Hiawatha. The Native American hero's goal in life was to cleanse the earth from evil and live well among the people, which again ties into the strawberries and Indian symbols. The virtues of kindness was a theme of the poem as well. Earlier on, um, he had, uh, Mike August had said, we see strawberries in the 1890 scene, as I had mentioned. Strawberries are a symbol of purity and happiness. Uh, shows Nucky is a good kid who loved Mabel and mir- mirrored brilliantly with adult Nucky defending the woman's honor in the bar later in the episode. Mm-hmm. There was a cigar store Indian, which has been referenced many times in the series. One of the uses was to ward off thieves, which nicely led into the show Opener telling Nucky about the thief. Oh. There was a reference to Paul Mooney, who played Tony in the 1932 film Scarface. There were a few kangaroo references. Kangaroos are a symbol of strength and are good at not staying in one place for too long. Perhaps a nod that Nucky is leaving Atlantic City. And it was interesting to note, I enjoyed seeing Nucky go back to just being a smooth talking Irishman. So when he was in that bar scene, just how it was so easy for him to flirt with the girls yeah. and make them laugh, and and it was civilian Nucky. Yeah, this is if he if he stayed with Mabel and he didn't get too deep with the Commodore, it's he would have been that guy. I know. You tell, being at the bar, telling funny stories, corny jokes, and so it was interesting to see how well he just was able to go into that. Almost Roll. like that was the life. Yeah. That was what, that was what he was meant for, almost. This could have been. I know, so we'll run out of time. Probably should run into predictions. Yes, right? let's do them. Okay. And now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. Bethany? I think we're going to go out with a hurricane. Go out with a hurricane next week or by, I, I, or I don't know. Eight. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be next week or at eight, but I think there's going to be a hurricane. I think I think the the man in the store was looking when he was looking at that from water and says, um, "Early days, hard from the early days." Yeah, yeah. I know, I know it was early days, but I think I think somehow there's. I don't know if it's going and to be that storyline or yeah. or in our modern and in, in well in this way current storyline. But there there and my prediction is there will be a hurricane. I could see a hurricane that that somehow ties into Jillian mm-hmm. being delivered to the Commodore. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, we're gonna see more of the Jillian origin next week. Mm-hmm. We're gonna see Jillian in the uh, mental institution mm-hmm. and see how that starts to resolve. Um, Will we know is we knew was gonna play a significant role, Eli's son, mm-hmm. and so we're gonna see the father. Eli's gonna confront. Well, we see Eli's disheveled and bearded, and you know we know you know he's he's another man without a country. He's got no wife, he's got no money, um, and then we see Will put to the test, bags over his head. Right? We see yeah. he's being yeah. threatened, and that's interesting. And um, it seems like next week there's going to be a showdown between Atlantic City and New York. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think mm-hmm. next week we're definitely going to get at least a big build up to a gang battle. And I wonder if they'll spend eight on the, the final episode on any part of that battle or if eight will be aftermath. But I think either late next episode or early eight, there's going to be that huge battle. And then I think for the 1897 thing, we're going to see Mabel. Uh, maybe die Perish. with... Perish. It's yeah. whatever happens, yeah. And I think it's going to be complications with the yeah. child. No, no. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. No, you. say it. <laughs> say it. You don't you like, That makes no, sense. No, because in the first or the second episode, she has a, um, she has the baby. Not episode, sorry. First or second season. We They talk about how she had the baby, and it ends up um, having, like, SIDS, but she tends to it the dead baby for like a week and then um, I, I don't know if she gets sick or she kills herself but that's that's okay. sorry to mess up okay. your prediction wow. yeah. that could prediction. be a lie though that could be a lie hey we don't know I that's admit, <laughs> I, I, I but th- I think I remember that happening. well I think yeah. ultimate prediction is I think Narcisse has a comeuppance yeah I do I think he's gonna have to pay He's going to, yeah. he's, he's, or that, that uh, Harlem's going to have to pay for his best chance at staying autonomous was having kept Chalky alive. And because he's evil and couldn't help it and, and he let his ego get in the way, he killed his only chance of being autonomous. Yes. Now Harlem's going to have to pay the VIG. They're going to have to pay to, and, and I think because he's going to refuse, I think, I think he's going to get taken out or maybe evil will try, will 
maybe he'll he'll pay and he'll so he'll survive the pain I, I hope that doesn't happen and i think i think nucky gets out of this a civilian i think he finds a balance between civilian and gangster but i think he i think he walks away well i'd definitely like to see that we'll have to see next week that's it for us guys Let one last thing yes althea is healing for you know that's healing in greek Okay, so the daughter. Chalky's way of healing. So, right, so that's why mm -hmm. some healing will take place. And I don't think it'll be Good for Narcisse. It'll be for the mother and daughter Maitland. Them. They get away from that. But there's healing coming. Some good has come from I Chalky. I believe so. I'm glad you said that. That's okay. a good place to Oof. leave it. Kevin, where can we find you? At Undergaro. Bethany? At Bethany with an IE. All right, and I'm at Charlie Barons, and we'll see you guys next week. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz See you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.